Hey, uh, checking in with chapters 7 to 19, most of 19, of Battleground, uh, the Harry Dresden novel, basically the second half of Peace Talks, which is basically, so far, seems to be one giant big battle. It's the big climax, it's the big climax uh, that this book is, uh, which makes it kind of weirdly uneventful. Um, in the sense of, yeah, there's lots of battles. There's, there's lots of kind of portentous stuff where pe things are blowing up, but I don't know if I have much to say about it. Um, in that it's big, big, big magical battle stuff, which to be honest is the kind of like, you know, you have the interesting build up, interpersonal, interpersonal, and then you have the battle stuff and then you have interpersonal interpersonal again um you know there's a lot of pretentious stuff here about uh you know is harry slipping more and more into being mabs uh, like, the cops are coming to get me for for daring to dis um um uh a jim butcher book um here i'm going to put this a little closer because it's going to be very loud it is loud um there's a lot more stuff about hair you know um harry dresden becoming more and more a meshed with Mab and Mab actually saying I was human once, which is, seems to be kind of the warning for Harry of, yeah, you're human now, but at some point you aren't, you are not going to be. Um, he's, he's being all kind of knight in shining armor. Ironically, not like the winter knight who is very more bestial mantle. Who's very all aggression and kill, kill, kill. Uh, he's very much like, I need to protect these people because the Winter Knight's mantle apparently has summoned people to him to make, to have them follow him. And he's like, well, I need to protect these people in a way. I need to put them someplace where they'll maybe have the best chance of, of harm. And uh, the um, basically Knights of the Cross have arrived, uh, Butters being one of them, uh, and a Russian guy being the other, and just said like, okay, I'm grouping them with you because you guys... You know, you've got God on your side, so I'll, I'll put you with them. It's an interesting world where there indeed is God, but Harry Dresden very much views himself kind of outside of that. I mean, I guess there's the winter night and all the fae and all that stuff. It's kind of an interesting thing. We have, we have God, we have Jesus in this thing, but we also have Odin and all the other kind of demons and, and you know, we've got the, the fairies and all this stuff. So he, he groups them with them. Um, Murphy shows up and she's going to be with him. I, there is a part of this thing that like you think, okay, we're, it's like it's this is the season. This is, this is the season ender for this season of of the Dresden Files. And we're gathering together all of our favorite characters. Now, Harry's not going to die. Well, he's he died once. Kind of like Buffy that way. But... Um, you know, it's like, okay, who's going to get offed? You know, Harry and Murphy made plans to maybe go get drunk after this. It's like, oh, is, is that the thing? I think it would be more like, oh, we, we're going to go for a vacation. We're finally going to settle down and be and raise, raise this pass all the kids together. That would have been the final kiss of death for Murphy. Um, or, you know, will it be Butters? Will it be, you know, various other people that he cares about? Now, a couple of people did die earlier, um, a cowboy and some other thing. And I, to be honest, it's such a gigantic world now that they may have had wonderful character development in earlier books. And I cannot, for the life of me, remember them other than like, hmm, Harry's pretty sad about that. And yeah, he takes a moment and is actually sad. But then it's war and I need to get back into war. I can't be human right now. Um, but, you know. So, yeah, it's it's entertaining. It's actually more popcorny than if it was a smaller adventure where I could I could the stakes were smaller and I could actually kind of wrap my head around them. In some ways, they're they're it's with the stakes raised so high it becomes infinite plus one, and you're just like, okay, I guess that's serious, but it's infinite plus one. So my my punny human brain is having a hard time wrapping itself around that, whether that's a limitation of me or a limitation of the author, I don't know. I mean, he's been living with this for a long time and it probably means a lot to him, but 
you know, and the, there's a thing about Harry, Harry getting very dramatic and like, you know, and the, the, and, and there's invariably there, there's a little girl with, holding a little stuffed animal and Jim just like, Oh God, you're, you're, you're really just, just kind of layering on a little thick there. Um, Jim Butcher is, is what is, is the thought that comes into my mind when you use things like that. that that's very tiny little detail, but just like, of course, the little Moppet has a little stuffed animal that it's holding on to. It's like, of course it does. <laughs> it's not like staring down at its iPhone going, why well, don't I have any si- signal? God damn it. <laughs> <I needed to. laughs> um, so yeah, I, I, you know, for, for, for not having much to say about these chapters, I guess I said stuff. Um, we're in on chapter 19. We must be, I think we're about halfway through, but it's like, it's just, yeah, it's halfway through a gigantic sprawling, big climax, which, you know, he's clicking it along and, and doing it, but it's going to be just one big hell of a night, I guess, is my sense of what this, this thing is. And, you know, um, you know, does that make it so big that it just becomes meaningless? It sort of has to a degree has already. We'll see if he can pull it out. I mean, he's probably going to butcher a couple of favorite, favorite characters and to, to make things, uh, hit that much harder with Harry. All right. More videos later.